This is the new 2025 Volvo EX90, and it's a fully electric luxury SUV with three row seating and a starting price of around $80,000. Now, this is not just an electric version of the Volvo XC90, it's a totally new, different car. And today I'm going to review the EX90 and show you all of its quirks and features. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Cars and Bids, which is my online car auction website for modern enthusiast cars. So far, Cars and Bids has sold almost five hundred million dollars worth of cars, all sorts of special interesting stuff like this and this and this and this. So. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car, do it at carsandbids.com. All right, time for the quirks and features of the new Volvo EX90. And we start with the quirkiest quirk, the headlights. You look at this car from the front, you don't see the headlights. The running lights are there, very obvious, but where did they hide the headlights? The answer is behind the running lights. You turn on the headlights and the running lights split up part and retreat into the car, revealing the headlights beneath them. It is an amazing headlight trick. When you turn off the headlights, the running lights automatically come back together. They rejoin and then hide the headlights again until you need them again. It's really amazing. And it even works with the high beams. You want to flash the high beams? Well, you pull the lever and it works quickly. The running lights pull apart, the high beams flash, and you're good to go for a couple seconds and then the running lights go back together until you do it again. It is an amazing quirk of the EX90. But before we go through any other quirks, I'm going to give you a refresher on the basics of this car. What exactly is it? And I say refresher because I already did a video walk around tour of a pre-production Volvo EX90 that I couldn't drive yet, but that was almost two full years ago. We've been waiting that long for this to reach the market, but it's finally here. It is shipping to dealers as we speak, it is officially on sale. So the basics, fully electric, three row family luxury SUV, like I mentioned. There's two basic versions. There's the entry level model. That's this one with about 400 horsepower and a starting price of around $81,000 with shipping. There's also the high performance model, which they call the performance. It has about 510 horsepower and the starting price is around $86,000 with shipping. And then of course, add options, go through higher trim levels, and the price can increase from there. Now, all versions of the EX90 come standard with three-row seating and all-wheel drive, and electric driving range is right around 300 miles, actually a little bit more. Zero to 60 for this version, the base model is around 5.7 seconds, and the performance is around 4.7 seconds. As for rivals to the EX90, the closest rivals are the Tesla Model X and the Rivian R1S, other fully electric three-row SUVs. SUVs, and then at the lower end, the Kia EV9 and the new Hyundai Ioniq 9. Now, it's important to mention that the EX90 is not just an electric version of Volvo's XC90 three-row SUV. It's a totally different vehicle. They have similar styling, similar naming, of course, and similar sizing, although the EX90 is about three inches longer than the XC90. So it's a little bigger, but not dramatically so, but completely different cars and slightly different price points. The XC90 starts around $60,000, but that's for a full gas-powered version. If you want to go to a plug-in hybrid, the XC90 T8 starts around $73,000, so it's like six or seven grand cheaper than the entry-level EX90. But anyway, next up, let's talk EX90 quirks and features, starting with getting inside. Now, this car, like a lot of other brand new cars, you can use your phone as the key. You don't ever have to actually use a physical key, walk up to the car, you get inside. But if your phone dies or you lose it, you can also use this little credit card sized backup as the key. You can keep it on your wallet, your purse, and then when you want to get in the car, you just kind of hold it over the driver's door handle. The door handle pops out and you climb inside and can drive the car with the backup credit card, which is a neat touch. Now you get in the EX90 and the first thing you notice is this is a nice interior. It looks good in here. It's sort of calming. It's well designed, fairly minimalist, like you'd expect from a Swedish brand, but nice material 
materials that look good basically everywhere you look inside this interior. Very upscale, high quality experience. And one interesting thing, the seats. It looks like leather, but this is not leather. Instead, it's a synthetic leather called Nordico that Volvo uses in these cars. Looks, feels like leather, it's comfortable like leather, but it isn't. In fact, this entire car is leather free for people who want to be especially environmentally friendly. And Volvo also offers a wool seat option, which is also a leather free choice, obviously, if you'd prefer that instead. However, if you do want leather, there is a Napa leather option available as well, if you think the Nordico just feels a little too synthetic for you. But let's go back and revisit that minimalism for a second. In the center console and control area, there is only one physical button, and it's this giant dial that has a play pause symbol on it, and it twists and it pushes, but that's the only physical control in this central area. Everything else is integrated into this screen. So let's talk about the screen for a second. Vertical screen, as you can see, and it is quite large, the entire center of the dashboard, basically, and it operates fantastically. Very easy, intuitive, responds instantly when you touch something or move it around. It all works great. And of course, it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard, but even if you don't use them, this is Google powered with Google Assistant, and the standard Maps function is Google Maps, which is excellent to see and obviously very easy to use, and it'll be familiar to most people. Of course, this system also includes some apps, as you can see here. You got Spotify, you have the Weather Channel app for weather, YouTube, and there is a fireplace. You tap on this, and then a fireplace image comes up on the screen, and shows a fireplace for automotive ambiance. Obviously, that's a direct copy of Tesla, which also has a built-in fireplace in the screen, but it's still nice to see it there. It sets a nice mood. Now, there are some especially interesting quirks inside this screen, like, for example, controls to adjust the mirrors. You have to go into the screen, this little card tab, and pull up the mirror adjustment, and then you can use the buttons on the steering wheel to move the mirrors left, right, up, or down once you've selected which mirror to move. Same deal with the steering wheel. The steering wheel adjustment is also inside the screen. You pop in here, and then same deal. Use the buttons up, down, left, right for all of your steering wheel adjustments. You might be surprised to see that stuff integrated into the screen, but it goes even deeper than that. Even opening the glove box requires using the screen. You go to the car settings, and you tap here for the glove box, and then the glove box opens up. You do not have a traditional glove box latch in this car. It's all on the screen. One other interesting screen item in the car settings tab is this little toggle for constant all-wheel drive. Like I mentioned, all EX90s come standard with all-wheel drive, but when you get going like at highway speeds, the rear motor stops being active and you're basically just using front-wheel drive unless rear is needed. But you can force the car to go into constant all-wheel drive, for instance, in a bad weather situation, or if you want an especially quick start, get all the wheels going at once and you'll start off a little bit faster in constant all-wheel drive. That's a cool feature of this screen, but I will say one drawback that some people won't like is that not only are all the climate controls integrated into the screen, but adjusting practically anything requires at least two button pushes. You can't really make any changes until you tap the climate screen and then tap again to turn on the heated seat, for example, or the heated steering wheel, or change the temperature. It's not quite as good as some large screens I've seen like this that have the climate controls kind of taking up a set space on the bottom so you can make at least simple adjustments with only one swipe of the finger. A little disappointing to see that here, although I will say one interesting thing, if you want to quickly turn on your defroster because your windows are fogged over or frosted, there's a separate hidden button right up here on the ceiling that you can do that. You push and that automatically turns it on very quickly so you don't have to go into the screen. Strangely, Volvo has also done that with the hazard lights. You can turn on the hazard lights with this icon in the screen, but there's also a backup physical button. You can see it right up here on the ceiling. That's probably regulatory. That's probably why they did that. There has to be a button for the hazard lights, but obviously there's another reason. If the screen ever dies, you're in some difficult situation, you'll want to have a backup hazard light. So here you have it in two places. Now, the other screen in this interior is a gauge cluster screen mounted basically at the top of the steering wheel, and it only really has 
has the basics. So on this screen, you'll see like the miles of range you have left, your odometer, what gear you're in, how much percent charge, the speed you're going, all your usual basic stuff is right here. It's nice to have a screen in this location right in your line of sight so you don't have to look at the center screen like you do in some EVs, including Tesla. And it's worth pointing out this gauge cluster screen can also be configured to show other things. For instance, a full screen map, as you can see, or sort of more basic general overall vehicle information. You can choose with the press of a button on the steering wheel. You also have a heads up display projected onto the windshield in front of you for even more vehicle information. So you're never in the dark about what's going on. Now, also in this vicinity, of course, the steering wheel is here and you can use the steering wheel to turn on the driver assist features this car has, which includes sort of auto steering for you, lane keep assist, they call it. It'll even make an automated lane change. You have to kind of initiate the process yourself. You're driving along in the driver assist mode. You press the turn signal stock and if there's an opening, the EX90 will change lanes for you. But even though good driver assist tech in this car, it is not fully autonomous. However, Volvo says that's coming. You see this little panel above the windshield in the front? That's where the LiDAR technology for this car is stored. Volvo tells me this car is already hardware ready for fully autonomous driving, but the software isn't there yet. However, that software will in theory come in over the air updates for this car, making it more autonomous driving capable over time. I asked them how long will that be? They don't have an answer yet, so it's hard to know when this car will be autonomously driving, but apparently the technology is on the way and will come to even existing EX90 models that are sold today without it. But anyway, on to other interior quirks beyond just the technology. An interesting one is certainly the window switches. So on the driver's door panel, you can see there's only two window switches and they default to rolling down just the front windows. But if you push this button, those window switches will then roll down the rear windows. You don't have four window switches in here, unfortunately, for front and rear. Instead, you got to use that button to toggle between. A little annoying, but you're not rolling down the back windows that often, so you can get used to it, but it seems like some kind of annoying cost cutting. Another interesting quirk in here is the sound system. This car is equipped with a 25 speaker Bowers and Wilkins sound system that even includes this floating orb on the dashboard, which looks very cool, like a rocket ship, and also speakers in the headrest. You can see the perforated headrest. That's because there's speakers in there for an optimal sound experience. Volvo tells me there's also a new feature coming called Abbey Road Mode, which allows for even more stereo manipulation if you're a real audiophile, and it's intended to mimic the soundboard at Abbey Road Studios. So that's an interesting quirk. Another one is the giant sunroof. You can see here a massive panel of glass over the entire top of the vehicle. Now, that panel can't be lightened or darkened. It also doesn't open like an open air sunroof, but you also can't close a sunshade on it either. It's just always there. However, for people who don't want a giant glass panel in their vehicle, Volvo dealers will sell an accessory sunshade that you can use to cover it. It just doesn't come standard with the car. Last interesting thing is the storage situation up here. You have multiple levels of storage. As you can see, the center console, and then below that, there is additional storage and even a strap, which you can use for larger items that might be rolling around. It worked well for my giant water bottle, for example, and that's nice to have. But you also have two level storage inside the center console. You open it up, it looks looks like a normal center console, but the floor lifts up to reveal additional hidden storage underneath. So if you want to hide something, that center console is the place to do it. And next up, we move on to the backseat in EX90, which is pretty standard sized given the size of this vehicle. I fit back here nicely. It's pretty much exactly what you'd expect in a mid-sized three-row SUV. Now, the EX90 can be configured to offer two individual seats back here, these two captain's chairs like this EX90 has, as you can see, or you can get a second row bench seat, which then has three across seating back here. When you have the captain's chairs, you get two seats up front, two in the middle, and then two in the third row, two, two, two for a total of six. If you get the bench seat, obviously that adds another seat to the second row. So you have seven passenger seating and you can choose. In addition to the room back here, the second row of the EX90 is a nice place to spend time because it has some nice amenities. You can see climate controls back here just for the rear seats to adjust their own temperature. And you have heated rear seats, which is a nice luxury 
luxury touch as well. You also have power ports back here on the back of the front center console for device charging and some pretty trick cup holders that are integrated into the armrest of the captain's chair. As you can see, pull out the armrest and there's your cup holder. And of course you have one on each seat back here. Now, the only drawback is those are the only two cup holders in the second row of the EX90. So you can't have like 13 drinks back here like some SUVs advertise, but still you do get cup holders and it's cool to see how they work. And next let's talk third row seating. Like I said, all EX90 models come standard with three rows and getting into the third row is pretty easy. For one, you can just walk around and in between the captain's chairs and then you're back there. A lot of people will do that. You can also fold the second row seat very easily. There's a latch here like on the shoulder. You fold that, the seat folds forward and it gives you access to the third row. Or you can use this latch down here at the base of the seat to essentially fold the seat flat and then you could climb into the third row if you wanted. So various ways to get back here. Now the third row is not exactly huge as you can see. Bigger adults would not be able to get back there, but smaller ones and kids, they would fit for longer trips and it would work out okay. It's a little tight, but basically what you'd expect for a vehicle this size. I will say though, the third row doesn't have really any amenities. You have power ports back there for charging devices, which is nice. But other than that, basically just a little cup holder on the sides and that's it. You don't have power seat operation like some third rows or extra climate controls, heated seats. You just have kind of the third row basics. Then finally, we move on to the cargo area of the EX90. You open up the tailgate and you can see the cargo area, which is shockingly large considering the size of this vehicle. I got a Toyota Sequoia that's way bigger than this, and I wish I had this much space behind the third row. It's big back here, even with the seats in place. And there's even more space under the load floor, as you can see, you just lift up this panel and then you got more storage space down here for smaller stuff if you don't want it rolling around in the cargo area. And of course, if you wanna drop the third row seats, very easy to do, power operated, push a button, the seat automatically folds down and folds flat on either side or both at once if you want to for maximum cargo storage back here. It's really an excellent storage situation. Also worth pointing out around back, the rear end design of the EX90 is a pretty distinctive look. Like I said, pretty similar looking to XC90 in other spots, but in back, especially with these taillights that run up the side of the rear window and just sort of the overall design back here, it looks distinctive and different from the XC90 in back, sort of more modern and more updated. In fact, the overall design language of the EX90 is frankly, very attractive. This is a nice looking SUV. Again, similar to XC90, but that's how Volvo does it. Clean, simple, and beautiful designs. Basically all of Volvo's models look great, and this is no exception. EX90 is a very attractive vehicle, not necessarily a styling standout or attention grabbing, but simple and nice looking. And finally, uh, let's talk about the front of the EX90. I already showed you the cool trick headlights, but Let's just see them again real fast. Ah, yes, there they are. That is a really cool feature, a neat party trick to show your friends. But anyway, also up front, you have a cargo storage compartment. To access it, you just pull this latch in the driver footwell, it pops open, you come up here, there's another latch, you open it up, just like an engine and a hood release. And you can see decent cargo space up here. Some cars have a small storage compartment. This one's not huge, but it's pretty well sized. You can get some good sized stuff up here. If you don't want it in back, you want to kind of keep it separate, that's what you can do. Also up here, a couple of interesting quirks. For one, the windshield washer fluid goes in through here. You open this up and you can see there's a built-in funnel. So when you add washer fluid, it won't spill out everywhere. That's actually a pretty cool idea that I wish other cars had. Also in here, in the cargo compartment itself, this little zippered bag is your tire compressor to fill a tire with air. And it has its own little spot, little pouch in this front compartment where it fits neatly and Velcros into place, which is a cool touch. Now, also worth mentioning, one other item to point out, the EX90 production happens in South Carolina. Volvo was a Swedish brand, now owned by a Chinese brand, but this car is built in South Carolina. And interestingly, that's even true for European market EX90 models. Those will also be built in South Carolina and then exported to Europe. That's the facility to build this vehicle. But your 
probably wondering, how does the EX90 drive? It's been a long time coming. Let's get it out on the road and find out. All right, driving the EX90. This has been a long time coming. I've been very excited to drive this car. A lot of people have been. This is one of the cars that I get asked about the most in my social circle. Everybody has an XC90, they want an electric, they're not necessarily sure about Elon Musk. Uh, what about that EX90? And it's it's been not out and not out and not out. And finally, it is here. And I'm proving that by actually driving one down the road. And my first impression, naturally, of course, is that it is a Volvo SUV. And actually, I think that's one of the cool things about this vehicle. There's no crazy, weird compromises you're making because it's electric. It doesn't have some bizarre styling or, you know, look at me, or it doesn't have some weird design that compromises your cargo space or your passenger space. This just looks like an electric Volvo SUV. In fact, so many, it's so much so that a lot of people think it's related heavily to the XC90, which it isn't. It's a totally different vehicle, but it just has the same design language. And that's a nice thing. But anyway, driving it, one of the first driving impressions I have is it's just very smooth and very comfortable, which makes total sense to me because that's exactly what I'm expecting from a car like this. It's also very quiet in a wonderful way. This is this just feels like a very comfortable, luxurious car. It is tremendously comfortable and, and luxurious and calm and serene, and it's lovely. Quick, obviously, like you'd expect, all electric cars these days are. It's not knock your socks off fast. This is not the performance model. But again, we think about use case here. Car enthusiasts are always like, ah, it's not fast. It's not sleek or sport. Like the moms are going to be driving this. Dads are going to be taking three kids to school in this. Like this is not a car that necessarily needs to be fast, although it certainly has enough performance. It's quick. It feels uh, quick relative to other midsize luxury SUVs, but it's not the kind of car that I would say is incredibly fast. Nonetheless, totally does what it's supposed to do, and no one will be disappointed by that acceleration by any means. Getting up to some higher speeds, it feels obviously stable, easy to control, just nice to drive. I mean, everything that everybody loves about Volvo SUVs this one just sort of happens to have an electric powertrain as well. And it's also very attractive like other Volvo SUVs have been. In terms of steering, light steering feel, not tremendously precise, but pretty much exactly what I'm expecting from a mid-sized luxury SUV like this. It's actually a little bit more composed in the corners than I was thinking it would be initially. That, Like I said, steering precision is not tremendously immediate, but it's totally fine and predictable. Uh, it doesn't body roll as much as you might expect given its weight, probably because a lot of the weight is lower mounted in the vehicle. Um, but again, it's no performance car. Nobody's buying this to be a performance car. It's going to be perfect for what people use it for. And it really is going to be perfect for that. I've driven all the electric three row SUVs, the R1S, the Model X, the Hyundai, or the Kia EV9. And I think this is probably the best combination of just like a nice, rational, family hauling three row vehicle and luxury and competence and technology. It really combines it all uh, in a way that I think everyone was hoping this car would. And it does. Um, it's great to drive. Just nice, nice place to spend time. Not remarkable from an enthusiast standpoint, but it will be a nice driving experience for basically all the, the families who buy these, who are switching from gas powered to electric powered or from plug-in hybrid to full electric. This is the car to do it with uh, in the Volvo world. And it's a very nice, SUV. And so that's the new 2025 Volvo EX90. There's a lot to like here. Fully electric with good range, attractive styling, great interior, good technology. A lot of people tell me they want a fully electric family SUV. Well, that's the EX90. It's competent, excellent in fact, and it's finally going on sale. And now it's time to give the EX90 a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 65 out of 100, which is an excellent showing for the EX90, beating out most regular three-row SUVs like the Lincoln Aviator, BMW X7, and Mercedes GLS, and also topping the electric's Mercedes-Benz EQS. Only the Rivian R1S and Tesla Model S Plaid do better, but both focus more on performance and capability than daily usability. In fact, the EX90 ties those two in the daily categories. I'd rather have an R1S for its performance, chunky styling, and off-road capability, but if you want a fantastic three-row SUV for simple around-town family shuttle duty, the EX90 might just be the best one ever made.